Welcome back, everyone. Friar Tuck here. Uh, this is my epoch, and uh, if you're into prepping homeless issues or the nomad life, this is definitely a channel for you. Don't forget to subscribe. One of my subscribers actually asked me uh, a question about you know carrying a firearm while homeless, and you know last night I had an interesting experience, and so I thought you know what, what better time to be able to talk about this subject than this morning. Uh, so let me let me kind of give you a, a little bit of a uh, of a backstory of what happened last night. So, you know, Sam and I are sleeping. Uh, somebody comes into our camp, uh, you know, because uh, I, I got another guy camping here with me as well. And, and you know, he kind of lets people come in and out. And, you know, he gets to kind of decide that because this is his camp. I'm just I'm just a guest here. And so some some drunk dude running from the cops uh, comes into our camp and he's on his phone and he's just, he's bawling his eyes out cause he's drunk and he's a, he's a sappy drunk. It just, it was, it, it was almost, it was sad, but I, I thought it was a neighbor behind me. I'm sitting there thinking, no, Sam, we don't need to bring attention to us because it's the neighbor. It wasn't until I was actually really able to get a good idea of the sound. And you know, that I noticed where the guy was. And as soon as I saw it up, I think I kind of spooked him. He stood up, but he was so drunk. He almost fell into the uh, he almost fell into, uh, see that area right there where the, uh, oh, okay. So that's a, it's a hole and, and stuff like that. So he, he, he almost did a face plant in there last night. And I, I told him, I said, dude, you get any closer. My dog's going to, my dog's going to bite you. And his first response is, oh, I got a pistol. I'll shoot your dog. And I said, no, you won't. Um, I will, uh, I'll get to you before that even happens. I'll probably pistol whip you and, and you know, whatever. Uh, cause I mean, the, it, it's just, it's just some young black kid who's mouthy and thinks that, you know, he's king of the world. It's, it's, it, it's so common out here. It's just, it, it's, it's stupid. Okay. It's like these young kids come out here and they think that they're invincible and they carry a weapon around like, like, Oh yeah, look at me. But here's, here's the truth. Okay. Um, if you're, if you're homeless and you're trying to uh, and you're trying to carry a firearm one, uh, in order to be able to keep your firearms, you cannot have any drugs, no alcohol, no nothing on you. You've got to be clean and sober if you're carrying. Okay. So that will be, that will be the first order of business because if you come in under the influence, uh, and, and the, the police see that that is their right to be able to take your firearm away from you. Okay. One, two, um, it is a ranged weapon in situations like this. It's very rare that you actually get enough range to be able to, to draw your weapon and to be able to use it. I think somebody can make somewhere around 30 to 50 feet in the seven seconds it takes you to, uh, to, to pull your, your weapon out of your holster, cock it, point it, aim, shoot. Okay, it, it takes that long, and so somebody with a with a knife can come up on you, and so on and so forth. So it, the only way a ranged weapon like that would ever do well out here is if you were you know dealing with front lines, if you were if you had combat zones. So let's say we had civil unrest, like kind of like what we saw in Seattle, where you have Chaz, something like that. I'm going in there, yeah, you know, I, I would be carrying it, but so on and so forth. But you, you people are still going to they're going to get close enough to you to where it negates the uh, advantages that a firearm gets you because we're not, we, we get too close to each other. Uh, there's, I can overcome. I mean, if this guy would have tried to pull a pistol out on me and the second I, I would have saw him reaching for that, I, I would have closed in on him, had him on the ground, taken it from him and started beating him with it. Uh, before he could, before he could even get it out and, and get it on me. I mean, even what about that kid in Wisconsin? I mean, he had uh, he had a semi-automatic weapon, and he was being charged. And just out, uh, just because they were wrestling for the weapon, um, he was uh, he, he, the the weapon discharged. And you know, he was trying to, in, in in at least the way the court case came out, is he was defending himself. Okay, so I mean, look at that and see the amount of trouble and the amount of obstacles that someone has. In order for something like that, you got to be kind of having it out in your hand at all times. So within a split second, you could pull it out, you could use it. And if you're going walking around like that, um, there there is no rule of law. There there is you know at that point in time, the predators are coming out and the weak ones are going to get cold. Okay, because you're going to have people that see that as an op as a way to be able to. Uh, usurp their power and authority over another individual. And so therefore it makes it even more complicated. 
if you're going to be homeless, if you're going to be in a city uh, and stuff like that, you maybe have a ranged weapon for hunting. OK, that might work for, work out for you if you're going to go out in the woods, stuff like that, carry a rifle, uh, maybe even for like a bear or something like that if you come across it. But if you're going to be in cities, in rural areas, if you're going to be around people, um, having a ranged weapon isn't going to work for you. What will work for you is to have something like a baton or a, a, my mom uh, in, in her car, she always carried a, a, I don't know if it was a lead pipe or a steel pipe or whatever, but that thing, that thing weighed as much as a gallon of milk. And, you know, it was always right there because if somebody came into, uh, uh, came into her car, she was able to react quick enough and get to that versus the, you know, cause I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta maneuver yourself, you know, you gotta, you gotta aim. You, you can't just like, you know, like this and stuff like that. It, whereas, with with an object in your hand your hand it's just an extension of your hand it's it's an extension of your body okay and so therefore you have a lot more control even if you don't have a lot of experience and a lot of training to be able to have something like that it will kind of act as an equalizer if you were a weaker party or it will be uh, it will be something that allows you to neutralize the situation quick if you train yourself on it and something like that the the police can't take that from you okay because it's just a stick it's just uh, it's just something like that that you carry with you so on and so forth but when you're talking about when you're talking about weapons like that um like a like a pistol or a knife um the police can confiscate from you they can take your second amendment right from you um they can do they can do a lot of that stuff and even if it's unlawful and they can't get away with it the uh, amount of time that you will remain vulnerable if you are so codependent on that that uh, it, it, it's almost useless to to fight for it unless it's just to get it back and then at that point in time once i got it back i'd take it i'd sell it get my money for it and that way at least i didn't lose out on on something that i put money out for but when it comes to dealing with um, with, with firearms when you're homeless, it's, it's not smart. Again, that kid, um, cause I, I, when I, uh, when I went to, to, to deal with the kid, I stood up, I was ready. I was in a position to where all I had to do was probably take about seven steps and I would have been up on that kid's face. And while he's trying to wiggle it out of his pocket, I'd have picked him up, body slammed it, taken it from him. And I, like I said, I'd have, I'd have pistol whipped him. Okay, and I, I was I was daring the the dude to do it, but he was he was too drunk, you know. I, I mean, uh, honestly, it was it was easy prey um, for something like that. And that, again, that's why you wouldn't want to be under any type of influence because you need to be uh, alert, aware, make sure that you're not you know just going after somebody uh, just because. Because by the time you get to that point of confrontation, um, there is there's very little distance between you and the other of uh, the other individual now you see in the movies where people come out of their dwelling with their with their uh, with their their weapon drawn but that's a dwelling that's not that's not out here you come out here with your weapon drawn um, you're gonna have you're gonna have civilians houses you're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna be spooked and what they're gonna be doing is calling the cops the cops are gonna be coming out you know and, and maybe even giving you a competency test um, and also to see if, if you know you're mentally stable enough to be able to have that weapon okay so there's a lot of things that will that could go wrong in having that and you are more likely to lose it or to have it used against you than you are to uh, to be able to use it in, in a situation. Not only that, people are always trying to steal stuff from you. How would you feel if somebody all of a sudden got your weapon and then they were running around with it? And that's somebody who, uh, you know, is deep into the drugs and all this other stuff. You, you see what I'm saying? It, it gets to a point where it, it's, you're creating more danger by having something like that than you would be just by, by having something like a baton or, or a, a, a solid stick or something like that. Because again, when it comes time to actually deal with it, um, you need something that is quick access and you know, that isn't going to turn on you. Because what happens if somebody, um, if somebody grabs your, your instrument from you, okay? If they grab your instrument, now all of a sudden that could be used against you. Which would you rather have used against you? A stick or, or um, you know, a firearm? I'd rather have a stick because I can steal that stick back. Okay, especially if I'm a skilled fighter. 
Okay, so it, it, it again, it becomes a, a natural extension. So you guys know how to help the channel become a subscriber, all that other stuff. Tip jars, tip jars down in the description. I'm looking to expand my um, to to expand my Patreon family. So uh, I'd like to invite you over there for hobo tutorials and behind the scenes. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.